Okay, we are live. Hang on, everybody. Just got to get the uh, Amazon stream going here. We haven't done a live in a little while. So we will see what we've got here. So this is like one of these rare occasions where I got a bunch of stuff that we can uh, unbox and test out here. And there's a reason why the coffee mug is visible because I got a coffee warmer <laughs> as part of the mix here. So that is what we're going to be shooting for. All right. So let me get myself uh, situated here and we'll be kicking things off in just a minute. And it looks like I just got an email about the Synology Container Manager, which is apparently now a little more robust than it used to be. That's going to be fun to play around with. Got lots of stuff on the, on the list here. So Reese Edwards is the first one in today. Hello there. Yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff to uh, play around with in a little bit. So we're going to begin. I think we're going to unbox the mini PC first because I suspect that one's going to have the most updates. So as I get my other camera going here. Um, so what we're going to play with today, kind of set up and test, like an initial test, is the um, Ace Magician mini PC. And then I got, it's funny, they, they mailed this to me in a box. This is a loaner from Asus. This is their ZenBook 14. This thing's a monster. It's got, um, it's got like a 4070 in it, I think. It's, it's pretty wild. It doesn't look like a very large laptop and it's not that heavy, but it's kind of got like all the bells and whistles you'd want in a gaming laptop, but in a very, I love small form factors. So this one appealed to me for that reason. And I don't know what kind of USB-C ports it has. I think they're Thunderbolt, but I'll double check the specs on it. But we'll get to this one in a, in a few minutes. And then I also got in, um, this one's kind of funny. I also got in uh, this coffee warmer. <laughs> this came in a little while ago, and I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. So I figured this would be a good opportunity once my coffee gets a little bit on the uh, cooler side to see how, how that works. But I thought what we would do here is start with the Ace Magician here <laughs> and see how that goes. Storybook Plot Holes is with us. Gil Garcia is joining us. Poorly Buffalo is here. And Red Techie around the corner. Yeah, we've got, we've got this. We're in Connecticut. He's not far from me. He's like literally around the corner. And we have this, um, th these wildfires in Canada. They're blowing down here. So we, we're not used to this here in Connecticut. So a lot of the after school stuff was canceled today because the air quality is supposedly going to be worse than it was yesterday. And yesterday it was pretty bad. So we'll see. Although it's funny, after they canceled everything, the weather guys are like, well, maybe it's not going to be as bad as we thought. So it's hard to predict the weather, let alone smoke. So we'll see what happens. Amda Brown is here. Good to see you. And Gil Garcia, got you twice there. And is it a really thin? Yeah, I think it's got a 4070 or a 4060. Let me check the specs that they sent me. Because they sent... Um, it's funny, it just showed up in a box. There wasn't even a box within a box. It was just in the box, like wrapped up in bubble wrap. And I was like, this thing, I'm hoping the screen isn't broken. It's a, um, an OLED also. So it's like, it checks all the boxes. But let me see what they sent me. Let's see what she sent. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so. And Nick says, everyone is reviewing these mini PCs. Yeah, well, I've been reviewing these. So he says, Kerry Holzman started it all. When did Kerry Holzman start it? Because I've been looking at mini PCs now for 10 years. So I think I, I may have a head start on them. I just maybe not, I, I maybe just wasn't the one who made it popular. <laughs> but as many of you know who've been watching me for a while, we, we've been looking at mini PCs for a very long time here on the channel. Uh, but let me check here on Asus. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so what she sent me was up to, but not what mine has. Let me see what the unit, the specs here for what they sent. I was going through. They sent over a reviewer's guide. And usually at the end of the document, they've got... Okay, so... Yeah, so the one they sent us, apparently... Oh, it still says up to, so I don't know what, what this one has on it. I will find out when I 
open it up and plug it in. Yeah, because everything says up to, so I don't know what my review loaner has. But we'll find out soon enough when we boot it up. But first, let's get the, uh, the Ace Magician out of the box and see what it's all about. And by the way, that comment from Nick came in over Amazon. So if you're watching on Amazon, you can watch me there too. Um, HDTube is joining us from Wales. Welcome. Yeah, a lot of people are doing lives today. Maybe it's, it's the wildfire smoke that's keeping all of us in. Remember, we used to do these things like several days a week when, when we were all locked up. Oh, so Kerry started in 2012. So that's around the time that I started. So maybe we're tied on that one. Say hello to a few more people. Daniel Terry is here. And Storybook is used to the, yeah, so it's, it's pretty bad. Like, we're not sure what to do. <laughs> so we're just shutting everything down. Zam is here for the coffee. Yeah, it seems like it, it got out of control on them. There's, there's a, it's just a lot of acreage, and it's, they, don't, they don't have enough manpower. And Zam's got a good point here. Steam OS might be a good thing to play around with on this machine, wouldn't it? Yeah, you know what I see, too? It, it, it's almost an economic thing in that um, the, the mini PCs, every so often, I think, the components get really cheap and all these manufacturers buy up a bunch and make these little mini PCs. So you see them kind of come out in clusters. So right now the, a the AMD chips are all over the place. That that's what this one is. I thought this was an Intel one until I took it out of the box. Um, LN says, I remember when I was reviewing the Kangaroo. Yeah, that was a cool little mini PC. And Live Events likes watching me live. And I would imagine given your, um, your title that you really do like live events. Well, I like them too. Patrick Chang is here. And James got a monitor just for chat. That's awesome. Is it vertical or horizontal? Let me know. All right, let's get the, uh, the Ace Magician out of the box here. This is made in China. They've got, a, a, obviously, a bunch of different ones. They have an Intel version, which I thought they had sent over, which I was, I was excited about. And then I said, oh, this one looks like an AMD one. Not that I'm ever disappointed with reviewing another mini PC, but you never know what you're gonna get. All right, so let's see what's in the box here. I wanna spill my coffee. So what we get is a user's manual, and this is definitely the AMD version. And here is the mini PC. Now this one, I'll have to check the specs on it. Warning, there's a warning label here. During the system boot process, if you cannot log into your personal account, please turn off, oh, this is, this is rich. Yeah, so here's what it says. Turn off Wi-Fi and LAN, select the skip option, and then log into your person. I wonder if they don't have a proper license on this, because that typically when I see a sticker like this, it means that they're screwing around with the licensing. We'll find out, won't we? Oh, yeah. All right, so this one has 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and a Ryzen 7 5800U. And we'll pop the bottom off before we um, open it up to see, or turn it on to see what it's all about internally. And then it's got a little power supply here and a Visa mount. And it's a uh, USB-C power supply. And it's clocking in at 65 watts of power and a HDMI cable. But before we boot it up, I'm gonna take it apart because I wanna see what's inside of it. But I'll tell you what, seeing that sticker there telling you to turn off your Wi-Fi before setting it up has me concerned. <laughs> it has me concerned because I've seen this before. You all know I've been doing this a while, I've seen it all. And so sometimes when I see that, now, remember, we looked at that ARM mini PC a little while ago, and that had a similar problem in that they wanted you to, like, hack your way into activating Windows. And I get really nervous when these machines boot right up into that because what else could they have installed, right? I'm going to do a piece soon on un unofficial Android TV boxes. Yeah, so uh, Amazon is pretty close to real time. 
and YouTube is on a 30 second delay because I do the 4K streaming up, upstream there. So that's why there's a little bit of a delay there. So Fred corrects the record on Kerry. He says that he did an Intel NUC in 2012. I don't know who this guy is. Um, did a NUC in 2012, but really started mini PCs about six months ago. Ah, yeah, I'm still your mini PC guy. Although I stopped doing them from a while, for a while because there just wasn't anything really interesting going on in the space. And I was seeing declining traffic on, on those types of things. To be honest, right now, what everyone wants to do is, or what everyone wants to see, is they want to see um, cord cutting. So dual LAN on this one too, by the way. HDMI display port, two USBs. I'm not sure what, it looks like those are USB 2.0 in the back there. The port selection is not great on this. In the front, we've got another Type-C and two USB 3s in audio. So I wonder if this Type-C has, um, if it's a dual purpose one. I'll have to find out when I dig deeper into it. But let's take it apart real quick and see what we have inside here. These screws are like super long. <laughs> Poorly Buffalo says they have the latest CCP BIOS on it. Yeah, that's right. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, I might want to maybe run this on the other network, right? That's not a bad idea. Maybe we'll do that. All right. So inside, we've got two sticks of RAM. That puts it into dual channel mode. And it looks like we've got an NVMe SSD. It's called an an air disk. But I'm going to do a quick um, B-roll recording here because... That way I can save a little bit of time when I shoot the review for it, if it gets one. We'll see. I'm, I'm very nervous about that sticker. Did I take that sticker off? I did, didn't, it? didn't I? I did. Jeez, what's wrong with me? Um, Ace, Ace Magician PC. We'll save it here. Okay. Air disk. Hmm, I don't know about this air disk thing. But you could always swap that out with something else. But maybe what we'll do with this is put Steam OS on it just to, if it's got some shady version of Windows, that might be, that might be a good idea. All right, let's put it back together. Yeah, I've got a, um, yeah, put your VLANs on a LAN. And yeah, these could make a good router, couldn't they? Because you got that AMD processor and two NICs. That's all you need, right? Z's Gaming is here. Good afternoon. Paul Bakewell is here. And yeah, this one's got two, so this one could probably do pretty well with that. Might be another thing we could try out with it. And uh, Discovery has just got one. So was it running a legit version of Windows, or did you just, just wipe it out and put Linux on it? I'd be curious to know that. And it looks like the, uh, the consensus here is that we're going to have a bad Windows license. Yep, I think that might be the case. So maybe what we'll do with this one is just throw Steam OS on it and review it that way. <laughs> and James has his monitor going vertical, but he's going to have it go, oh, he's going to have it go vertical when he finds the right mount. Yeah, I think having chat on a vertical would be great. And Patrick's saying, he'll put it near them. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably run a different cable out of my other room there. Yeah, I could put Ubuntu on it too. These, these typically will work with that. And it is a full-size NVMe. I think it's 512 gigabytes. But it definitely came out of some... Uh, yeah, it's non-branded. It's it's basically the uh, the leftover uh, the leftovers B, B grade uh, drives from the from the Chinese factory, right? So what I am going to do with this is I'm going to connect it to the Wi-Fi on my second network that is off the grid, if you will. 
So that is what we're going to do. That way I don't have to go schlepping with cables all over the place. And then we'll, we'll see, just to see what the, the Windows license is looking like on this. And then we'll kind of go from there. But yeah, I'm a little uh, nervous about that. Nick wants to know, what do I think of the Team Group MP3 4 M2? I don't know much about that one. I tend to stick with the name brand storage devices like SanDisk, Samsung, WD. Well, WD and SanDisk are the same these days. Discovery says he replaced his with Ubuntu Surfer immediately. <laughs> or Mint. Yeah, we can put Mint on it. I kind of want to do um, Steam OS because that's, that's, that's a good use case for this machine because this is one of those, um, it's Ryzen powered. So you could theoretically have a good gaming experience on this one. All right, let me see if I can find the other end of this power cord. And somebody just texted me. Oh, okay. I'm not sure where this goes to. Great. I think I forgot to send buddy, somebody back their power cord. All right, hang on a second. I got to go find the cable that I discarded here. And my coffee's getting to the point where I think I need to warm it up here in a minute. So we'll, we'll take out the coffee warmer. <laughs> James is here on Amazon. Hello there. Yeah, Kingston isn't bad either. I could live with Kingston. I've got a couple of Kingston drives. Yes, I'm. I'm. I am very um, nervous about the OS situation on here. So we'll see. Maybe I'll be. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. But my experience over the years has been such that uh, I don't think I'm going to be wrong. All right. I even have lousy twist, ow, lousy twist ties on this thing. I just got poked by one of them. All right, let's plug this thing in. Yep, you get what you pay for. That's why I like to stick with B-Link. I've, I've had good luck with B-Link. I've had good luck with, um, what's the other one that I like? I forgot who the other one was. But we'll know very quickly here what the, um, what the status is of this when we get it going. All right, here we go. All right, it's got a pretty noisy fan, but usually the fan comes on full blast and then it like dies down. Hey, MeFace is here, good to see you again. And not sure why I'm getting, there we go. Okay, and what I'm going to do also is plug in my, my little ThinkPad keyboard thing here. Just a moment. Let me dial into the, uh, the headquarters here. So this one, okay, this is promising. I think, I think we're, okay, no, we're, we're okay. We're starting from scratch. So far, so good. Um, this cost, if you click the link in the video description, it'll take you right over. Um, let me check my, my link. I think this one's got like a $90 coupon. Yeah, so it's $419 and they've got a coupon. So when you check out, it is like $90 minus $419. So what is that? That's uh, $329 which is not bad for, for what it is. All right, so I'm feeling a little more confident about the network situation here because we're starting from scratch. We're not starting up with, uh, you know, some kind of flaky uh, pre-logged in situation. We've been there before, folks. So, so far, so good. But we'll, we'll continue onward here and see what, uh, what happens next here. So I'll hit yes. I'm in the United States. Yep, that's good. Nope, oh, 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 oh. Go back, I'll skip that. I'll accept your license agreement because I don't have much of a choice in the matter. And where did my ethernet go? Here it is. So I'm feeling a little brave here. So let's see what happens here. We'll, we'll plug the, uh, the old ethernet in and see what, uh, see what we get. All right, it hasn't caught fire yet, so that's good. And let me check out the specs on this thing. So 
So the Type-C does do video output on this. What's not clear is how, what the performance of the, oh, interesting. So it's not bringing me through the standard Windows 11 workflow here. And I wonder if it's because I didn't have a network connection. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, let's try it and see what happens here when I go through the, through the, the process. And it's going to answer my security questions here. Yeah, so it's bringing me through like it doesn't have an internet connection. So let's see what happens here. Because usually, like, they want, they force the Microsoft thing on you. Right, because MeetFace says you need to have a Microsoft account now. So the only thing I can think of here is that the version of Windows 11 on here is so far behind that it doesn't require that. But let's see. And Darth is here from Montana. Hello there. Yeah, I'll put the, the specs on here um, in a second. So let me get that going here. Yeah, so it can support three display outputs. And for its specs, where did my, I think they were on the side here. So the specs are, this is an AMD 5800U. So that's a Zen 2 chip, is that right, my experts out there? So this is a, uh, a specs. Um, this has got AMD 5800U, 16 gigabytes RAM, dual channel, 512 gigabyte NVMe, and uh, what else we got? I think that's it, right? And we'll pin this here to the YouTube thing so we can have that set. All right. So, hey, Jeff is joining us from Alabama. Yeah, so maybe that's why, because it, it didn't add, but usually, like, the, the, the flow when you first go in usually asks you for a, um, you know, it asks you to connect to the network first. This didn't even ask me to connect. So I wonder, let's see if it finds any updates. And it found a bunch. So we'll download all these updates here. And while that's going, why don't we take a look at computer management and see what we have in the, under the hood here. So device manager. I'm actually curious about the network adapters. So it's got an Intel Ethernet controller, L226V. Well, that's, that's intriguing. So it, it's almost like it's got an Intel controller and a Realtek. So it's got two different network adapters inside of it. Oh, I see. So one of these is um, so one of these is two and a half gigabits. The other one is one gigabit, and I don't know which one is which. <laughs> it doesn't say. <laughs> it doesn't. There's this two LAN, but it looks like the so the the Intel controller here. I'll give you the, the view up here. What number is that? Ten. Um, the Intel controller does two and a half gigabits, and this is a single gig gigabit here. And then it's got Wi-Fi 6E, 80 megahertz wide. And so that should handle um, your 6 gigahertz thing. And you got your rising cores there. 
So that's interesting. So it's kind of funny. It's got more components than you would think it would need, right? Discovery says it's Zen 2. And Marco is here from Tijuana. We'll have to try a couple of them and see how they run. And yeah, every once in a while you get a good one, but uh, it's interesting. Yeah, so we've got um, one gigabit and 2.5 gigabits. And Crab Donkey said his chat shut off. I'm not sure what's going on. But we are updating right now. So the big question is what will happen after we <laughs> go through the update? Because it's downloading its cumulative update. So if we go in and look at what version of Windows we're on. Well, well, that'll give us a good answer here. So what do we got? So it's Windows 11 Pro. Is it activated? Let's see. It's activated. OK. So that checks out. It was just weird that it was doing that. So let's go back and see what version of Windows this has again. There you go. Let me go back to where I was. Because you, you Windows experts will know which, what version this is. So this is 22H2. Yeah, the update show. Well, this is why I've got the coffee warmer. <laughs> <laughs> I got the coffee warmer and I've got um, the other laptop here. So, And Jeff says, like James was saying, if you don't have an active internet connection, you are offered the local account creation. Right. So I wonder, though, if um, here's my question, because typically my experience has been that when you start it up, it, it asks you to connect to Wi-Fi first. Right. I didn't get asked that. It just took me right through. It didn't even go to the Wi-Fi as an option which was why I was thinking that something was fishy there, which might still be, but it looks like it's, it's activated, but perhaps they, <laughs> they did something to it. I don't know. We'll find out. And we'll go back to Windows Update here. So I'm going to let it do its uh, cumulative update here, and then I'll restart it, and we'll see what, uh, what we end up with. But it looks like a pretty recent build. Ah, so Jeff says the... The home version is more forceful on that. I don't know why they don't just give it away at this point, because they let you install it if you didn't pay for it, right? They load it up with ads. So like, why even bother charging for it anymore if they're, not, if they're gonna let you install it without activating, right? And I guess in their minds, it's probably better you, you install it and get nagged than, than pirate it, but. Meatface says uh, he's got 10 megabits per second Simplex, and he's happy. <laughs> Jim is on Amazon, welcoming everybody, and welcome to you. And we'll let this finish uh, updating here. What's funny is my, my uh, B link that I've got over there with the prior, that's the one I use for my ham radio stuff. That, that one is running with the prior edition and the prior Ryzen, and it's, get, it's stuck. I can't update Windows on it. I'm getting this weird error. I can't clear it. All right, so while that's going, why don't we uh, take a look at this, this mug warmer here. So this is, this is the I could go. Let me move my mug out of the way here. So this is the, the I could go. And you can find this in the Amazon chat here. I'll put it up on the, on the carousel. It's 50 bucks, and full disclosure, all this stuff came to the channel free of charge, although the Asus laptop, the most powerful thing we've got, that one's on loan. So this comes with a, a mug, which I'm not going to use because this, at the moment, I've got to put this in the dishwasher first. This, this thing smells like a plastic factory. <laughs> they have a little cover for the mug to keep it, keep it uh, warm there. And then this is the warmer unit. And apparently it's got a, um, an infrared temperature sensor for its thermostat. But the cable is super short on this, so I'm not sure how far this is gonna this is gonna reach. And I wonder what the maximum output is on this. 
So it'll, uh, it maxes out at 75 watts, according to the, the back of it there. So I should be able to accommodate this on my, on my existing thing here. So let's get this uh, situated. So I'm not going to overload things here. This uses less power than the computer. All right, so we're going to move this over here. And uh, let me turn it on. So it's set to 150 degrees. And so if I put my mug on it here, there it goes. So it's reading 95 degrees right now. Let's zoom in on it real quick here. That's pretty cool. And then I guess it's going gonna, it's gonna to heat my, my remaining, remaining coffee up here. So I got some coffee in there. And I guess it shuts it off when you pull the mug away. And I'm only just doing this because we, we need to have an intermission while we wait for the, the update to, uh, <laughs> to finish up here. Although it looks like, it's, as was mentioned, it looks like a pretty recent build. So we might be okay on that front. And what I will do here is just adjust the display settings. I like to have my 4K run at 200%. All right, looks like it's ready to restart. Just got to do the uh, malicious software removal tool here. So if you look at it here, my temperature is escalating. So I, the, the mug is about half full. And then you can adjust this upward too. So we can go up to, see if we can get it up to 170, see what happens. Now the fan on the mini PC, it sounds like a little mini wind tunnel. All right, so I think we're ready to restart. Well, it's still doing the AMD graphics driver, so we'll let that finish installing. And here it goes. It's going 110. All right, looks like it did the graphics drivers. And now we're ready for restart. So let me, let me do the, uh, the restart of Rooney here. And we'll get that going. And yes, Nantucket, it's like the New England Hawaii. We don't have a tropical island, but we do have Nantucket. And if you've never been to Nantucket, it's great. I love Nantucket. So the uh, heating thing is called the Icago Smart Mug Warmer. If you click the link in the video description, it'll take you right over to my live stream on Amazon where you can find it. But it looks like it's working. Let me see if it feels warmer. You know, there must be some kind of film on the, on the heating surface because it stinks. <laughs> like it smells like melting plastic. So my hope is that this is, I wonder if it's the mug actually. Hang on a second. No, it's a, it's a ceramic mug. But it actually smells pretty bad to be honest with you. Let me smell a little closer. Yeah. It, it's got a smell to it. And maybe a, that just goes away after a while. I don't know. That's right. You got Block Island also. If you fly out there, you go over Block Island and you land in Nant Nantucket, right? Have I tested the Mela? Yes. In fact, I have reviewed it. It's a great little uh, device. And you can check out the review on my channel. I do have their updated one. They, they changed the... Um, the power thing on it. Yeah, there are a bunch of sound. This one kind of does sound like a vacuum cleaner when it's really blowing, for sure. And it could be, it could, everything could be melting. Could very well be the case. And I, th I think the, the plastic is leaching onto the bottom of the mug. 
because I smelled it when I pulled the mug closer to my face. It was, it was overpowering. So, yeah, I don't know how long it takes for that smell to go away. I'm going to have to ask them that question. It, it smells terrible. Like when I pull the mug closer to my face, I smell plastic fumes coming up from the, ow, from the bottom. It does, the bottom of the mug gets freaking hot too, for sure. But we'll, we'll let it go a little bit longer. I'm going to get it to 150 and then we'll see if my, my coffee tastes any warmer. But the smell is so overpowering that it, it really, like I know the plastic is not getting into the mug, but it smells like it's in the mug. So whatever's on the, the surface of that heating element is, is transferring to the bottom of the mug. All right, so it looks like we are back on the mini PC here. And it's not letting me back in. Oh, I got the caps lock on. All right, there we go. Okay, it is back. And then of course we'll have another, another round of updates to do on it, right? But let's get Steam on here. Well, you know what we'll do first, we'll, we'll run the uh, 3D Mark um, benchmark on it and just see how it, how it performs. I will say that the, the coffee warmer, it does, have, it does escalate the temperature very quickly here. The infrared thermostat points though at, at the bottom of the mug right here. So it's, it's, it's detecting not the heat of the water but the heat of the outside of the mug. And so you can see when I put my finger in front of it, it changes the temperature there significantly. Okay, let's do another check of Windows Update. All right, we got one more, one more to go here. I like to get these things like totally up to date before I test stuff on them just to have it have it be be good. Yeah, we can run wildlife on it. I usually run that and TimeSpy are the two that I run, just because I run TimeSpy on everything. So And Leonator says it's okay to smell like that on the first start. Okay, so we will hopefully it doesn't smell like that on the second start. We'll have to see. Right, let me see if my, my coffee's warmer now. A little bit warmer. But man, does it stink. Yeah, I'm thinking that's what you got to do. I'll check the man. I don't know if there's a manual with it that says anything about that. Let's see if it's got anything on the... There's a little, little book that it comes with here. So they want you to use their mug. And you can use other pottery, which this is, this is one. Metal cups are not recognized due to the risk of burning lips. So be aware of that. Don't burn your lips on this thing. Um, And so their mug, just by the way, like their mug has like a little channel here. So it's got more surface area to connect, which is why they recommend theirs. Because th this mug that I've got here just is like your standard ceramic mug. I wonder if it's the bottom of my mug burning off versus the unit itself. But it definitely gives off a lot of heat for sure. Yeah, never read the manual. I never do that. Oh, 
Did I check to see if there was a plastic peel off? I don't see one on here, <laughs> but you know, yeah, no, there's no, there's no peel off on that. And what are SFC's screen playhouse? Help me out on that one. You know, that's not a bad idea, Dustin. You could probably use it for that too. And Leo Nader says, I've got a similar thing that smells like burnt rubber at the first start, but then it works perfectly. Yeah, I think there's probably some residual whatever they use it for on there that's probably contributing to that. Yeah, so I think that's it. But usually they'll tell you like, hey, there's a smell here. Just be aware of that. Now what it will do, here's another little thing on the manual here. It will automatically shut down when the IR sensors detect no mug movement for two hours. So if you just leave the mug on here, it's gonna shut off after two hours if you don't move anything. And then if um, there's no mug in the heating area, it will shut down after 15 minutes. So it keeps it on, assuming that you're gonna be drinking the uh, the thing there. But it's only 75 watts, so it's not going to consume all that much power. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Okay, well, it does work. All right, so we're doing another update here. What I'm gonna do in the interim is get my Steam account going here. And we'll also throw uh, Chrome on for our usual slate of tests here. I'll tell you, Microsoft is really aggressive on, on like when you try, so let me show you what happens when you try to go, go download Chrome, right? So if I go to google.com, right? No biggie. Now I search for Chrome. Let's download Chrome. Once I go to that, th yeah, uh, see that? <laughs> it's like, are you really, do you really want to download Chrome? Because it even takes over. So think about like the Microsoft of the 90s doing this. If they did that in the 90s when they had that, that antitrust suit coming against them, like that would have been the end of the world, right? But I just like to put Chrome on here because I run that browser bench speedometer test and that one is always uh, So Junebug wants to know, am I going to get the new Apple AR headset? Probably not. It's pretty expensive. So the problem with the Apple mug or the Apple mug, the Apple uh, headset is that I don't think it's a consumer device. I think it's really kind of geared towards the very small market that would buy a headset at $3,500. And I think what they were waiting for was, you know, is, it was kind of a smart move on their part because now what they've got is the people that are going to buy the Apple headset are not going to be disappointed with it because they know what they're getting, right? Okay, I will say that my coffee is warmer. So if you were wondering if the, uh, the I could go will heat your mug up, the answer is yes. So, yep, and it doesn't use all that much power, so that's, that's nice too. Although it just smells when you first start it, although the smell is not as bad as it was when I first turned it on, so it must cook off whatever chemicals are there, which I've just breathed in. Okay, I'll try, I'll try the SFC commands and see what we get. Yeah, there you go. Apple mug incoming, 499 USD, handle 199 extra. But I think, um, so chat, Crab Donkey, when you say you got cut off from chat, did it like kick you out? Let me check the, uh, I don't see anyone moderating you. Old Scruffy one, thank you for the follow. 
right, so we're, that, let that update kind of go through. So you know what I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, maybe get the, the laptop going. So let me unplug our mug warmer here. We know it works. I'll probably do a little ex extras channel thing with this in a little bit. But my coffee is now nice and warm. Ouch, ooh, that's hot. You got to be careful not to touch the, uh, the top of it. It gets hot. Okay. It did feel a little, I didn't touch it for long, but it, it did feel a little oily. So there must be some kind of oil on there that's just kind of burning off when they get going. All right, so here's the laptop. This is an Asus ZenBook Pro OLED. This is on loan, not a freebie. So I got to send this back to them when I am done. And it comes with a 200 watt power supply. So it uses far more power, more than double the power that the, um, that the coffee warmer was using. Now, where did I put the power supply? And I got a follower from Amazon customer. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, we're in, uh, we're in lab mode today where we are experimenting with a whole bunch of stuff at the same time here. And what we'll find out very quickly is what the specs are on this Asus laptop. Now, what's neat about this is that it has an AMD GP, or AMD, an NVIDIA GPU, likely a 4070, although it could have a 4060. It's got your Intel processor on board. And it should be able to crank some, some stuff out there pretty decently for us. Now, I was hoping to do like an unboxing of it, but they didn't put it in a box. They, well, they threw it all in a box. Like, I, I got a box with the laptop and the power supply in it, but there was no, like, box to unbox it with. So we'll, we'll see, uh, see what kind of condition it's in when we boot it up. All right. Well, the good news is the display didn't get crushed in shipping, which was one of my concerns. And this one is going to log right in because usually their PR departments kind of set things up for us when, uh, when we get them in. So it's got a physical touchpad here. Oh, they have uh, oh, they got all the Adobe stuff on here already. Ooh, can we play with that Photoshop thing? Let's see. See, that's, that's kind of nice because I don't have to install all that stuff. Oh, it does have Photoshop. I wonder if it's on, like, their account so we can play with it. Oh, yeah, I got to, yeah, they have it installed, but they haven't um, done much with it. Okay, so why don't we take a look and see what this has for a GPU, and then we'll go back to the mini PC once it's done here. So NVIDIA control panel. All right, system information. I'll zoom in on this in a second here. Okay, so this does have a 4070. So let me zoom in and I'll give you all the specs on it. And we are on the laptop now. Let me go over back over to my Amazon stream and select the, the right product here. And this thing ain't cheap. This is like probably about 2,500 bucks. <laughs> But you want the best. You got it here. Hang on a second. All right. Yeah, the kids walked out of school. We have uh, you know, air filtration. We put all these air filters in for the pandemic. So now with the smoke, they couldn't smell anything inside the building. They all walked out because we kept the kids inside today. They walked out like, wow, it smells like smoke because it's uh, pretty, pretty bad out there. All right, so the maximum wattage on this 4070, I'm going to put some notes together here, is, um, is 85 watts. And I'm not sure what other wattage options there are on 4070 laptop GPUs, but I will research that. <sighs> so we've got a 4070 GPU 
85 watts. And then for a processor, and I'll show you what we've got here in a second. So it's an Intel i9. Thirteen nine hundred H. Oh, so they they decked this one out. This one's got forty eight gigs of RAM, and it is running eleven Pro. And Meatface says the power supply is not USB. That is correct. Although it's pretty compact, so this is a two hundred watt power supply. And it's a lot smaller, so it must, ha it must be a GAN-based um, power supply, because it's not large. I don't know if it says anything on the back here. Yeah, 200 watts. So not, not bad. Not bad at all, because I've seen you know, the, the Lenovo ones that I get are much bigger. So it must be one of those GAN, Galleon, what is that, Galleon, whatever. All right, so now going back to the mini PC. Oh, good, we're ready to do our restart here. So why don't we do that real quick. And while that goes, I'm going to put uh, Steam on here. Yeah, I'm actually considering, um, you know, because I've been playing around with some of that AR or AI uh, imagery lately. Oops, sorry, but I was missing the chats here. But yeah, back to the uh, Apple headsets. I see some chats on that. They are going to um, sell a lot of those. But they're going to sell this, you know, not as many as a consumer product would get, but they're going to sell a lot because everyone knows what they're getting. When you pay that much for it, you got to know you want it. Can you game on the mini PC? Yeah, we're going to find out as soon as that update is done in a second there. And uh, yeah, we'll do some Red Dead Redemption on that mini PC in a second, and on the laptop. And you're welcome, Davey P. Does the trackpad do the thing where it shows? I don't think this one does that. But what it does have is that it's got the, this little scroll thing on it. So apparently you can, you can scroll like with a, with a little scroll wheel or something. So we'll check that out in a minute, too. And I'm not sure where this screw came from. <laughs> I'm always nervous when there's screws that just randomly appear on my desk because I did not, uh, did not authorize that screw. All right, let me get uh, Steam installed on here real quick. I also got to install Chrome on here too. All right, so we're going to put the laptop here aside for a second because the mini PC is back up. But I like this so far because, you know, you think about it, like this is... This is like gaming PC in a much smaller form factor. I mean, this is like what you what a what an ultra book would have been maybe seven or eight years ago, right? So pretty cool. All right, so let's go back to our mini PC here and we'll get Steam going on that because now it's totally up to date. I think the only thing left to do on it is maybe get the um, is maybe we'll get the, uh, the AMD drivers updated on it. But I think that's about it. All right, so we are back in business. And why don't we do the browserbench.org test real quick. And I think we should be pretty much up to date now. And I don't know if having it at 4K impacts the performance. So we'll see if that does have an impact. I have tested a few others of these. And Rosemary's very excited about it. Yeah, it's got, I think it feels pretty solid. I'll give you that. Yeah, 48 gigabytes on a laptop is a lot, isn't it? I wasn't even thinking about that. It is quite a bit. All right, so 293 on our browser bench. This is on the uh, mini PC, not the laptop, So the, which actually is pretty good. 
So if you go over to lon.tv slash benchmarks, you can look at the spreadsheet that I update whenever I get one of these things in. So 293 is right up there with all the, the latest Intel stuff I've looked at. So this is the Ace Magician They call this the AM06 Pro. And this has the Ryzen 5800U. And we got a score of 293, which is very good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to put steam on this sucker. And we'll grab, um, I have all of my stuff already on this hard drive here, so we don't have to re-download everything. Ooh, I just turned off my... Uh, Automatic titles here. All right. Let me just grab Steam real quick. What I love is the portability of Steam. When you download a bunch of stuff, you can just keep it all on your, your little drive here, and you're good to go. I would say, of course, that this mini PC is not going to be well suited for um, 4K gaming. And Mifei says on that laptop, the top right of the trackpad will activate the wheel. So we'll try that out in a little bit. But I do want to get a benchmark or two done on the mini PC. This one, the mini PC is definitely something more affordable. Because <laughs> right now, as configured, it is about $329, which I think is a pretty good price for, for this. Especially because you get Windows 11 Pro on it. So that's pretty good. All right, I'm just going to go log into Steam here. And what I like about Steam lately is that you can now log in with your phone. You just scan the barcode when you're logged in on your phone. And that's it. Just lets you right in. All right, so we're moving forward there. And now what I'm going to do is, oops, get my little hard drive out here and a USB-C cable for it. Here's one. And we're going to plug this in to the Type-C port on the side. And that's the front. So the back, is there one in the back just for the power? So we'll plug into the one on the front here. All right, so now we got that going. And also what I'm going to do is connect up my, my Xbox controller. I could get my Game Pass stuff going on here too, actually, if I wanted to. Get the Xbox controller connected. We're good to go there. Yeah, I should have done it. Should have got that. I've been meaning to get to that 8 bit Doe controller I've got. I've got the new um, 8 bit Doe. I got, I've had it for a while. It has the Hall Effect sticks on it. I've been meaning to get to that. Yes, I'm definitely going to test uh, No Man's Sky on it for sure. And actually, I'm going to do a video soon. Um, it's on my list of things to do because they just released it for the Mac. And it supports um, M, M1 and M2 processors. So I was running it on this little, it runs at like 60 frames per second on the MacBook Air without a fan. It's incredible. So it's neat. It's neat. All right, so let's get the mini PC going here. All right, so we got everything connected. And what I'm going to do now is just connect up my um, my external drive here. So we'll go to downloads, Steam library folders. And what I've got is a bunch of stuff already downloaded, including Red Dead Redemption, which is something somebody wanted to see. And so what I do is go to D. And I always pick the wrong folder, so I think they are in... Yeah, Steam Library, select. Yep, there we go. Okay. And you know what I will do is I will, I thought I had No Man's Sky installed on that drive, but I don't. So I'm going to just do a quick install of that. And we just did a little thing today about, on my blog, about 
having a one gig connection and how fast you actually, or 10 gig connection, and what you actually get out of that. So I'll show you here what we're currently experiencing. So this is only, this one's on a one gig uh, ethernet right now, so we're not gonna see more than this 108. But it doesn't get much higher than that, even, at, even when I'm on a 10 gig connection because of the, oh, actually, you know what? Maybe we are on a two and a half gig connection here. We have to be, because we're exceeding what you normally get out of a one gig connection. This is actually faster than what we had this morning. Yeah, we're at 1.2. So I must have, I must have that, that Ethernet cable must be running off of my 2 gig network. Some stuff is on a 1 gig switch and some is on a 2 gig switch. So, that, so that's why it, it varies. But that's still not up to the 2.5 even, let alone 10, right? So that's what you typically see here. Yeah, it feels pretty good. And Chris says, yeah, dual LAN, I could make that into a Proxmox. Yeah, you could do whatever you want with it. It's got plenty of, uh, plenty of power. And Londog says, when I was doing computer repairs, virtually all of my customers never needed the desktop PC that they had when it came in. Yeah, things are, it's, things are getting down to the point where you can fit so much on a single chip. Like the, you know, the, M, the M1 and M2 Apple chips really are pretty remarkable when you think about it. The fan, I will say, is noisy on this. It's not any better or worse than some of the other ones that I've tested. Let me just wait for this install to finish and then we'll run the benchmark on it. Uh, no, the mini PC is on Ethernet. And apparently we're connected at two and a half gigabits. I can verify that. Let me take a look here. Let me see what we're, what we're on. Yeah, actually we are at two and a half gigabits. So it, it is somehow connected to my two and a half gig switch. <laughs> I must have plugged in the right cable today. <laughs> I've got everything, uh, yeah, I've got wall plugs everywhere. I just don't know what is connected to what switch because I'm always moving stuff around. So apparently I, I did right for once in my life. Okay, so we're good there. So why don't we run, we'll run the wildlife benchmark test first on it. That one goes a little quicker. Yeah, so I've got a fiber cable on the production computer that's currently doing the live stream. So that one's got a um, 10 gig fiber optic connection back to my, my distribution switch. But I have a bunch of machines here in the house, 10 gig off of RJ45, also work just fine. And I'm also using uh, direct attached copper to interconnect some of my switches at 10 gigs. Yeah, Chrome OS Flex is another good option. I, I gave my mom a Chromebook. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, she calls me at everything else, but she never has a problem with the computer. So, MG first says, uh, would this be good for I would not run vMix on this. It could run it. Um, you know, if you're doing like basic 1080p streams, you could probably do two or three. That would be the same for OBS too. The problem I have with this one is that your options for bringing in video are a little limited because you only have two high-speed USB ports or three high-speed USB ports on the front. And I don't know if they're sharing the same bus. And the back ones are two, are two gigabit, or uh, less than that, 2.0, so 480 megabits. So I guess you could do NDI on it, but I, I, for vMix, I recommend people get a PC with an NVIDIA GPU. Now, for example, right now on my, so I have an i9-9900K, I think is what I'm running this computer with. So I have four... 4K um, sources coming in. The, the uh, mini PC is 4K 60. And then my three cameras are 4K 30. And the mini PC is coming in over NDI. But my total utilization right now with those four 4K sources, plus some graphics and the stream going and everything else, 
I'm only using about 20% of my available resources. So I've still got a, a lot of room on this machine, you know, the, the desktop. But yeah, I've got 10 gigs uh, in the house and then now out of the house. You can check out my latest video on that. But yeah, I think for most consumers, like these mini PCs are not what I would recommend for a consumer. I think they're fun for people that want to tinker with stuff, right? We'll go over here to benchmarks and they have a new one here called Speedway, but I got to pay for the update. But I'm, I'm still set in my ways, right? So here's wildlife, we'll get that one downloaded. Oh, you know what I did not do is we didn't check. So it did get an auto update from Microsoft on its driver, but maybe we want to download AMD's latest drivers. So let's, let's do that real quick. And this is a Ryzen 5800, which is what? Oops. So we're going to grab the Ryzen, I think it's the Ryzen 7? Nope, Ryzen. Let's see. Oh, here we go. 5,000 G Series desktops. This is not that either. Hang on. So, this is a 58. I didn't even say which one it was. You know, I'm going to download the uh, software and just have it find it for us. <laughs> It'll be a lot easier. All right. I just figured, you know, let's get the right drivers on here, get the thing completely completely legit before we run a benchmark on it. Because it was, it was downloading the, the ones that Microsoft provides as part of Windows, but I figured you know, we can do the, uh, the actual drivers here. Oh, so uh, Red Techie got in some 25 gigabit NICs today. It didn't work well, but I think it's because of the complexities. Yeah, there's probably some drivers. That's a, the high-speed NIC drivers in Windows have been difficult. And, you know, I had an issue. So these, these are the second set of 10 gig NICs I've had on my PC. So my gaming PC upstairs and this one are the same motherboard. It's an Asus from whatever, whenever the 9900 was out, that was the motherboard I got. And it has three of... Um, the high-speed PCI Express slots on it. What I didn't realize was, there we go, we'll install those drivers. What I didn't realize was that my, um, my motherboard ran the third slot at X2 versus X4. So it was two lanes versus four lanes. And there's a BIOS setting to have it run at its full speed. And that was not enabled by default because the motherboard has six SATA ports on it. Like you really need that these days, right? Plus it has two NVMe slots on the motherboard. So I wasn't even using any of the SATA ports, but apparently to use port five and six, you need to have the, um, the system configured in X2 for the slot. And so the result was the NICs were not running at the full 10 gigs. They were only running at 6.6. So when I set the setting to X4 and turned off 5 and 6 on the SATA ports, boom, it suddenly opened the floodgates. And I was having an issue with that with the prior card that I had because every once in a while it would lock my network up, like, like the whole network in the house. And I think what was happening was it was overloading that port. It wasn't negotiating properly, um, whereas the other card was. So... I think I never had a problem in the first place, basically, so we'll see. All right, we're going to get these AMD drivers installed, then we'll run the benchmark. Sorry this is taking so long, but that's what usually happens when we get something in. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly what it was. 
Yeah, so what happened was I, I, I had that night, I was like, you know, what? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And I just went through every BIOS setting I could find. And sure enough, there was a setting there for that. Let me ask you all watching, like, what's the market for this? Like, the, you know, I mean, it's cool that you can get this little mini PC that can do all this cool stuff, but you can buy an Xbox Series, or an Xbox One S, or even a Series X for less money and get, you know, more gaming out of it than you would with this. I mean, I like having a small form factor PC and all, and I guess the price is right. I mean, 300 bucks and change, right? Um, I mean, I have use cases for them. Like, for example, my, my ham radio computer is a mini PC just because it's small and it fits over there. But I could do the same thing on a small desktop on the floor that I could probably build for around the same price, I guess. I don't know. Oops, I popped out of my Amazon chat here. So we've got a new follower here, uh, uh, Georgie M. Thank you for the follow. And we'll get back to the laptop in a minute. So right now, the uh, AMD drivers are installing, which is why we have a blank screen. So once that's done, we'll run the benchmark. <laughs> Chris is going for it. So let me ask you, Chris, how many computers do you own? People ask, I, you know, as a kid, it was like, how many computers do you have? I'm like, I have two. And everyone's like, wow, you got two computers. Holy crap. Now it's like, I don't even know how many I have. I do get rid of them as, much, as often as possible. So the school takes them. Yeah, I, get, I, I find homes for all of them. What I found, though, is that when I give away something, I get three more back. Like, it's just karma working its, working its magic. So. Ah, the Minus Form, that was the other, the other brand I was thinking of. So Doom somehow runs a Minus Form PC for VMs, low power. That's true. That's a good point. Mr. TechnoWiz saying being able to uh, play games and do homework at the same time, and it's pre-built. You know, I just got in, speaking of pre-built, I got in a, a tower from Lenovo, their little Legion tower, the small one. So we're going to review that one soon, too. I got a lot of stuff to, to look at. That's why today I had time to just, I'm caught up, so I'm like getting things set up here. I may have Jake take one of these to do all the rest of the stuff on it. Come on, Dave, you can never have enough computers. Just keep buying them. You'll find a use for all of them. So I'm hoping the drivers are installing. The fan is blowing on this thing pretty hard, so I'm guessing that's the driver installing. We'll see what happens when it, uh, when it comes back. So maybe while, as that's going, we'll take our laptop back out again here and see what else we can do with this. And hopefully it comes back to us. Because in the meantime, we can get some stuff going on the laptop here. I'm not sure. I guess that they tapped in this corner. I don't know. Yeah, the tapping on the corner doesn't seem to be doing anything on the, the special mouse thing. I got to dig into that a little bit. What I need to do first, though, is get this laptop at least on my Wi-Fi. Now, I have Wi-Fi 6 here at the house. And what I am finding with it is that generally I can max out what a server would provide for me. So for example, like when I'm uploading a YouTube video, my upload speed on Wi-Fi with this 10 gig connection is not all that different than Wi-Fi at, at around 800 megabits because there's only so much that YouTube allows you to do. All right, we're good to go there. I'm beginning to worry about my driver installation. The fan is blowing on that little mini PC and I'm not seeing anything. Let's maybe turn the display off for... Eh. We have to reboot the PC in a minute. Everything was going great up until I put that AMD driver on it. But in the meantime, I'm going to go grab uh, Steam for this one. And we'll get that going. But I got to say, for you know, a 4070, this thing is light. I mean, it's, it, you know, what, I'm, what I'm most curious about is how well it's going to do under load for an extended period of time.
I don't think it likes the driver I'm installing on it, but I'm, I'm reluctant to force the issue. So we shall see. Now, in another note, I was considering um, getting a Photoshop subscription. I was talking about that when I was looking at this earlier. Because that new AI fill looks really cool. Especially for, like, I struggle with thumbnails for my YouTube channel. So to have it do that kind of thing, it would be really, really kind of fun. Yeah, I probably broke it. But you know, that's kind of par for the course when I review things. There's always something when I'm live that breaks when uh, we're doing that. And Chris wishes that Bluetooth support were a bit better on Linux. He's been running Pop! OS mini PC with big picture, but getting some weird lag with Bluetooth controllers. Interesting. We know what I'm going to do here, everybody. I'm going to do something I tell people never to do. We're going to hit the old, we're going to hit the old power button on this sucker. Let's see what happens here. I think it's just locked up. I'm not supposed to do that, but what do I care? It's a loner. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go get Steam going here, and then we'll, we'll, jump, we'll be jumping back and forth. I'm doing some, some multitasking today. Where'd my phone go? So let me get my phone. Steam must wonder why I am constantly logging into computers all the time. Bear with me here for one second. There we go. Sign into Steam. All right, so that's going. All right, the PC did come back up. So what I wonder about here Yeah, that is true. Actually, this is what um, I typically have Jake do for me because it takes a long time. And, you know, my reviews end up being about 10 minutes or so. The PC reviews in particular have become kind of formulaic, but there's only so many ways to, you know, like a good exam example of something a little different was the, the one that I just uploaded, which is, the, um, which is that, uh, that weird PC with the... You all saw that, um, the, the Lenovo one. Um, that one was rather unique because it has like a, a, a dual display laptop. So there was something to talk about with that one. Um, but most of the time, a PC is a PC. It's a commodity item. They all tend to work the same way. But there's a lot that goes into getting a PC working, as you're seeing right now. You've got to get the drivers updated. Like there's all this stuff that you got to get going here. It looks like the driver installed, so let me load up the Adrenaline software and make sure it's happy. Yeah, it says it's up to date, so the driver's working now, so there we're, we're good on that front. So now what we can do is we can load up Steam, and we're going to run that 3D Mark benchmark, for God's sake, so let's do that real quick. All right. Yeah, now Chris, have you heard about what Apple just announced with their, um, with their emulation layer for Windows gaming, their conversion pack thing that they're doing? That looks really interesting to me. So out of nowhere, Apple came up with this game conversion toolkit that apparently is going to allow people to accelerate Almost in the same way, it's, it's going to be a translation layer for DirectX 12. It's kind of neat. Crab Donkey says, someone tried to load Vista and the updates took two full days. I believe that. Nothing surprises me anymore. All right, so let's go over to the wildlife benchmark test, which I should have installed now. There it is. And we're going to run the first one here. And I'm going to have it run it with the demo. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to do the uh, unlimited. So I, this is not as fun to watch, but we'll run the other one too. You know what? Let's just run it so you can see it. It looks cooler. We'll run the other one after it's done. I, sh I feel like I need to show you something because <laughs> we haven't looked at it doing anything yet. I believe it is Metal 3 Red Techie. So, and we're going to do a video on this. No Man's Sky is running on the MacBook Airs now, like at 60 frames per second. It's crazy. 
and it runs really well. well that's not bad. So we're getting about, this is the, um, the regular wildlife test. It's running at about 30, about 30 right, right here. And it's 50, 46 right now. I've always been impressed with, with these things. All right, so now, oops, can you all hear me? Hang on a second. Hopefully you all can still hear me. My, um, yep, you can still hear me, I think. Looks like it's still going there. All right, so now. So uh, my vMix has locked up a little bit here. <laughs> um, this happens from time to time. And so right now I can't switch cameras. And it, it, it's an NDI problem. So I'm going to see if, if pulling the plug on my NDI box here is going to resolve the, the matter. I don't think it's going to, but let's see if it fixes it. If not, we're going to be stuck on this shot now for <laughs> the remainder. <laughs> um, okay, so everybody can hear me fine. Okay, so I just can't switch cameras right now. It's so weird because it, it, you know, there must be layers to how um, vMix operates. It doesn't happen often, but when I'm switching video modes frequently, there is a little issue with, um, so I can do this. We're now single camera. So the good news is that it runs, a, it gets a pretty good score here. This is the regular wildlife benchmark. And if I go over to, Let's go back over here. Wildlife Unlimited. There we go. Okay, so I'm just looking on my list here to see what comparatives I have. Yeah, so it comes in, you know, roughly in between what I saw on the prior generation Ryzen chips, but I, if I'm not mistaken, the graphics hardware is the same. So what I'm going to do here real quick, we have that score recorded, but I'm going to run the Unlimited test, which is how I ran it on the other ones. And what this does is that um, when you run it that way, uh, it doesn't have to render to screen. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. Now, if I'm feeling adventurous, what I could do is cycle vMix, and that I might be able to get back and before it drops all the streams. So we'll see what happens after I get through this part here. So I can't put any more things up on screen, I don't think. Maybe I can. Let's see. Oh, I can do that. So I can still send things out. I just can't turn them off. <laughs> so thanks for stopping by, Chris Allegretta. Yeah, I don't know if I can turn off the... So my, my vMix interface is totally locked up. Yeah, you know what's funny? I got in the new version of that thing and it didn't work as well. They had one with like a landing gear and I just couldn't get the thing to take off. And I even like followed their, their stuff to a T. But they do have a new one out now, so I should probably look at that. All right, so see, we got a better score now and that's because we ran the, the other version of the test. So. It's coming in actually right where this B-Link one that I looked at not that long ago came in. So this is the Ace Magician, what do they call this one? This is the AM06 Pro. And this is a Ryzen 5800U. So it's pretty much identical on this test to 7647 to what we got out of 
a 4800U version. I mean, it's like right, I mean, it's literally right on the money. If you go to lon.tv slash benchmarks, you'll see that, that score there. Am I going to watch the Xbox showcase? Yes, it depends on what my, what my family wants me to do this <laughs> on Sunday. I would prefer to do that. I like what Xbox is doing. And Major Nelson's a buddy of mine. He's a good guy. He's a fellow Connecticut guy. So I'm wondering here if I can... All right, here's what I'm going to try here, folks. I can't guarantee that we're going to be in good shape when I do this. But I am going to quit vMix in a minute. But maybe before I do that, I will load a game up. Now I need to get my B-roll going. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try my best here to not kill the stream. You're going to see me disappear for a minute, and hopefully I come back. All right, so stay tuned. I'm going to have to force quit vMix, but I should be able to get back in time. All right, so stay tuned. If not, I will uh, recycle the stream. So be right back. Okay, I think I made it back in time. Let's see. And I'm, I'm switching again. I think we're okay. Yes. I think I managed to get it to work. Okay, good. So we're, we're in good shape now. Now, do I want to risk bringing the NDI in again? I do. Let's see if it'll, if it'll, if it'll cooperate here. Ah, perfect. Okay. Good. How about that? I think we are good. Okay, so let's go over to No Man's Sky. And see how this runs. And this will have to turn down to 1080p just to see what happens. Oh, I had no idea he was at that grand opening. That's funny. That was a good store. Because they let us, uh, when they released the Surface for the first time, we did a, actually did an on-site review or a preview of the thing there. They let me go to the store before they opened one morning, and we did a, a preview of the new Surface devices when they first came out. All right. Well, this is good. So I'll be able to do, um, I'm gonna, I've, I don't have a, a huge amount of time here. But we do have some time, so let's get, um, we'll do a little demo of this, and then we'll do a demo of um, Red Dead Redemption 2, just so I have some B-roll for my, my review that I will be doing. I'm, I'm so far pleased with this thing, though. I think it's, I think it's working out okay. I had my reservations about the, um, you know, about its uh, Windows license, but it looks like those were unfounded reservations. So it's good. All right, so we're just going to wait for this to pop up here. And then we'll tweak the settings a little bit. But it's still pretty amazing like what these, you know, these, these systems on chips are capable of now. It's crazy, right? We're seeing it on both Intel and on, on AMD. So uh, Alexander and Victoria C, thank you for the follows. We'll get to the laptop here in a minute. Uh-oh, there we go. I think this might be running at 4K. <laughs> so let's, we'll turn this down here in a second. The fact that it's running at all at 4K is pretty remarkable, to be honest. 
All right, so let's go in and see what we have for display settings here. So we'll go to display and graphics. Oh, it's only a 1080, huh? I was expecting it to run a little better than that. I'm just going to turn everything on to standard here. I don't think we're going to get beyond this, but let's just crank this up to 85 here just to, for the heck of it. And the window mode is not where I like it. I like to have it as full screen. All right, so let's apply this and see if that fixes anything here. Okay. That's better. It still doesn't look great, though. I just want to see what it's coming in at. Yeah, so it's coming in at 1080p. All right, so let's go in and look at, I'm going to have it put um, the frames per second in the upper left-hand corner. All right, there we go. All right, yeah, so we're running at about, in, in standard mode here, this isn't bad. It's running at about 30 frames per second. And honestly, that's what you typically see on this hardware. So we might want to go a little lower on the settings, maybe. And we're also on the planet. So the planet tends to eat things up a little bit more. This is my base, by the way. I built, I built this. I'm so proud of myself for building this. This is my little base here. Yeah, so we're at 1080p. I think I've got it at the lowest settings, I'm pretty sure. And I'm going to walk around this thing as you can see the view here. The view is beautiful. So this is like my little lake. This planet's awesome. I will give you, in my video that I'm going to do on this, I will give you my coordinates. Because this planet is like a paradise planet. There's no night. It's always a perfect, perfect tropical weather. Sometimes I put the VR headset on and I just kind of chill out in my, on my planet. And then I can go underwater. So I built an underwater base here so I can go out and get some resources or whatever and go back in. Most of the time I can get back in. Isn't that cool? And I've got another tube that goes lower than this. Doesn't it look cool? It took a lot of glass to build this. And there's no reason for this to exist other than it's just kind of cool because they have like fish that float around and isn't it, isn't it neat? I'm so proud of this. I built this all by myself. And this is the lower level. So I've got like two levels. I haven't finished building out the lower portion here. So you can see this is where it left off. But it's looking pretty cool. But like I said, on my MacBook, without a fan, I'm getting better performance. Oddly, I don't hear the fan running as hard as it was when it was updating before, which is kind of weird, right? But yeah, it's doing about 25 frames per second. So how I found the time on this one was that I was on a vacation and I brought my Steam Deck with me. <laughs> so I built all this on the Steam Deck so I could like pick it up and work a little bit on it. And the kids would, would want to do something and I'd put it down and go do something with the kids and then pick it back up again. Yes, I haven't done much building. And my, lately, my gaming time has been consumed with that new Zelda game. So, yeah, so it's playable, but it's not like, I mean, you would get better performance on an Xbox Series S. Oop, got my controls reversed here. But what I love about this game is just the fact that it's so immersive. Like, you can, the VR in particular is really cool. Um, just because, like, as you're playing this game on a two-dimensional screen, you know, being able to pop on the VR headset and then just jump into a much more immersive environment is really cool. And then we can go to see some other planets here. I'm not sure who's, oh, that's my other, my other base. I, have, I, have, I built out a few bases in this system here. 
So this is all my stuff. I don't think anybody's found my, my coordinates yet. Keyboard G says it's an old GPU. Better than Intel, but that's about it. Yeah, I would say it's better than, I think the Intel ones do a little bit better now. Yeah, it's all standard. So yeah, but it's doing okay. Just don't expect it to be like game console quality here. I'll load up Red Dead Redemption 2 after this. That one I'm going to run at 720p. I don't think we've got any, any hope of running that at a, at a higher frame rate. All right, let's t talk to this guy here. He wants to sell me some stuff. Let's see what he's got. Nothing I need. That's one of the things I love about No Man's Sky is that there's, there's a ton of ways you can play the game. So um, I have it set so that you can't mess up my base. So there's a setting in, in here. Let me show you. There's a setting somewhere. Options. It's in, is it in general? I'm just looking here to see where the, where the setting is. Ah, here it is. Okay, so in settings, add base parts, no, bun, no one. Delete base parts, I'm going to change that actually, <laughs> no one. <laughs> so nobody can change my base parts or add base parts. I could change it so my friends can do it if they, if they wanted to, but um, base terrain. No one. And then my refiners, I have it limited to groups, group and friends. So you have some protection against your base getting screwed up. Oh my goodness, that's all I was thinking about yesterday was the blood moon. I was like, I was preparing myself for all my, all my enemies to respawn. Because <laughs> that's exactly what it looked like yesterday. It was awful. It was really bad. Yeah, this little mini PC isn't bad. I think it's, you know, it's what you would expect out of, out of this hardware, so it's not doing anything spectacular. But what I love about this game, it just, just for this kind of stuff where you can just fly around, here's another planet, land on the planet, you go anywhere, make some money, I'll show you my other base in a second here. Um, I'm not sure why I put a base here, to be honest with you. I think it, I think it looks out on a really cool plane here. And it's night on this planet. So not all these planets are as nice as my, my other one. But this, this, this system is a little nicer than some of the other ones that I've, that I've seen. Jesse wants a shout out. You got it. Thank you for the likes. And Nicholas Norman started following. So thank you for the follow. All right, let's get out of the ship here. Yeah, I think I look out over a nice vista here, which is why I... Yeah, this is what I, I think this is why I like this planet. So this spot here looks out over a beautiful vista. So during the day, it looks really cool. So some of, these, some of these bases I planted just because, oh, it looks cool. And then you put on the VR headset and just chill out. It's really, it's really fun. All right, so there you go. So that's um, No Man's Sky. So we're looking at about 25 to 30 frames per second at 1080p. If we did 720p, it would do a little better. So No Man's Sky, 1080p, 25, 30-ish. And Daryl, thank you for the follow. Yeah, we're just playing around here with a little mini PC. And we'll do Red Dead real quick. And then we'll try to do something on the, on the uh, other PC here just to see what that can do. And Red Dead's going to take a minute to get all the junk installed here. Now the, now the fan, you know, it's funny, this fan wasn't running until, it's weird what sets that fan off. You would think a game would be, would be really driving it hard, but it doesn't seem to be.
So let's do Red Dead. But what I like about this mini PC is that the it's got a two gig Ethernet port and a one gig in one, which is kind of neat. So that's been that's been kind of fun. Would this be good as a Plex server? The answer to that question is maybe. So I have found that some of these AMD devices will do some hardware transcoding, but it's not directly supported by Plex. So what I would suggest is looking at an N100 based mini PC or an N95. Those will do a little better. Oh my gosh, if you haven't played No Man's Sky, it is, it's like Freelancer without any real kind of storyline to it. So there, there is a story to it, like you, there's, there's things that you can do in the game, but you don't have to. You gotta totally get it. It's gonna consume your life, but you'll love it. And it will run great on that M2 MacBook Pro. Now, yeah, like if you want a good game for your MacBook Pro, that's probably the best one to get right now, especially if you're into, if you like Freelancer, you'll like this. And it does, you do, you can do missions. Um, there is a, a limited story. The story is not, it, it, it's, it's fine. Um, but I think the, the nature of the game is just its open-ended nature and they keep updating it. So you will have a lot more content now that the game has been updated a gazillion times. In fact, they just had an update drop today. They added a whole new storyline to it. But yeah, you will not be disappointed with No Man's Sky on your MacBook Pro. And so we got to adjust some settings here on Red Dead. So let's do that real quick. Yeah, I'm not sure how well this one's going to do. Actually, I know how well this one's going to do, not well. All right, so graphics. So right now it's already at 720p, so I think I'm going to leave it there. Because I don't think we're going to get a lot out of this one. Okay, so we're at 720p. And as far as settings go, oh, it just... Ah, see, it does this every once in a while. Yes, keep those settings. There we go. Okay, so we'll scroll down here. Let me show you what we're looking at. I'm pushing my luck on... All right, so I've got it set at the lowest settings I can get it set at. And let's see what we get here. Confirm. Yes. I think it wants me to restart the game. So let's go out and then we'll restart and then we'll see what we get out of this. It will be playable. It will be playable, but it won't be. It's not going to rival your Xbox. Sean Jones says, have I played Diablo? Not the new one. I played the old one a long time ago. By the way, it says I've played this game for 19 hours. All of it is just me testing computers. <laughs> I've, not, I've not gotten too far into this game. I haven't been a big, I'm, I'm into space stuff. I'm not into in Zelda. I can deal with Zelda, but I'm not into like the Wild West. Not my thing. But I appreciate what they did with this game. Leo Nader is going to bed at 11 o'clock. Thanks for sticking around. So y y yes, it is kind of like Minecraft. There are plenty of dangers. Um, there is a permadeath mode that you can enable. There's a lot of different ways to play it. This is No Man's Sky we're talking about. And trot, not gallop. Got it. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know something? When you find one of these mini PCs that works, they're great. And I, I, so I use one. I have one very similar to this that I use for my ham radio stuff. And it's perfect for that. It's small. It doesn't, take, doesn't consume a lot of power. It's powerful for what it is. So yeah, you can do a lot with them. And, and the newer ones like this one actually can play games. But it's one of those things where if you're weighing, if you're weighing this versus a Xbox, I would say the Xbox is probably the better way to go, especially if you are intending to play mostly games on it. All right, let's see what we get here. And we're gonna have to come back to the laptop because I got to run in a few minutes, but we'll get a little more B-roll shot for this and then we'll go from there. Actually, if you want, I can, I can do something on the laptop in the meantime. Oh, I've seen this happen before. I can't remember what, uh, oh, there it goes, Never mind. 
that was weird. It's like it's still like drawing in. I've never seen that happen like that before. Yeah, so the draw distance is off a little bit here. Now before, this was a video memory issue, but hey, you know something? This isn't bad. So we are at 720p at, at the lowest settings I could muster on this. And we're hitting 50 frames per second. That's really good. 46 right here. So we got close to the building. It's dropping into the 40s. But it's still north of 30. That's really good. I mean, you could play this game. It's not 60. And if you go down, if you kill the resolution further, you could get, you know, you probably get 60 out of it. A couple little gl glitches as it was drawing in, but I mean, it's, it's playable. I'm pretty impressed with that, to be honest with you. I was not expecting that. Oh, don't, don't mind that. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Dropped the video signal. My NDI thing crapped out again. But I am still here. Let me just close it so we're not dealing with that. Yeah, not bad. Now you'll see though, it's harder to see on this, but you, know, you don't get the, the textures are not there, right? Like you, you're, missing, you're missing a lot of the detail that you'd have on a more powerful computer, but this is pretty good. Yeah, and that's the other thing. These, these computers really need dual channel memory. The latest Intel ones apparently don't, but the, um, the AMD ones and the old Intel ones cer certainly do. But that's pretty good. I'm impressed. All right, so that was good. So yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's functional. All right, so let's get the laptop out here real quick. I, I want to do something with the laptop just to say that we did it, right? So let's see how it, let's see how it handles that benchmark here. And I, and I got to spend more time with this one because this is a, this thing's a monster. And this one, they're kind of um, gearing towards the creative set. So we might, so I could run, like I could run the whole YouTube channel off of this thing, for example, if I wanted to. Does it have a touch screen also? Oh my goodness, it does. That's crazy. All right. Yeah, so I got to spend a little bit more time on this one and do my homework on it. But it looks nice. Yeah, so we'll run a quick benchmark on here and just see how this compares. This might be a fun exercise because the, um, the mini PC, of course, is, is much more constrained. So we'll run the same benchmark <laughs> on this and see what we get. Matthew Pate is here. Hello there. And Rosemary June. We're looking for that laptop there. Yeah, the, uh, it's not hot. I got to run my, um, I'll run my stress test and all the other stuff that I usually run on it just to see how it does. But this one, I, I can see this one being really good on it, uh, good for creatives. And I haven't tested this thing fully yet, but I like the form factor. It's expensive, but because I, you know, I went with the Lenovo Legion laptop for my on-the-go production machine because it is small. This is smaller. But oftentimes when you have small, you have heat issues, right? So the cooling, the cooling is going to be a big thing to look for on this one. And we're just waiting for it to do its thing here, and then we'll, we'll run some tests on it. And what I could do, actually, you know what we could do as a good comparative here, is I can pop that drive out of the other computer, and we'll throw in No Man's Sky on it just to see how it does. How about that? And then I got to run. 
Let me eject the drive out of here. Yeah, the Ace Magician, though, I'm pretty, I'm, you know, as many PCs go, it's, it's decent. You know, the, the, the only thing with them is that you don't know how long they're going to last. And, you know, they come from some unknown factory in China. So you don't know, you don't really get a, any, you're not going to have any um, support. <laughs> so it's going to work as long as it works. And when it stops working, you've you got to get another one or, or learn how to solder. Oh, you know what I should do on this before we go too much further here? Let's make sure we have this thing set at its full performance mode here. There we go, best performance. And I got a lot, I got to research on this one before I dive into the review, but. But it's nice, it's got an OLED screen. The viewing angles are really nice on it. And you know, like, some of the gaming laptops can look a little obnoxious, right? So this one is, is much more tame. And while that's going, I'm going to look up one other thing here. This is fun. We haven't streamed in a while, everybody, so I'm glad I could stream with you all. Speed test by Ookla. I'm going to do my uh, internet speed test on the mini PC here, too, see how it, how it does there. And do I want to risk adding that NDI source back? I don't know if it's going to come back again or not. And it's not coming back. Yeah, I'll do it later. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to run a quick speed test while we get the other things downloaded here. So we'll install TimeSpy. And we'll do the wildlife benchmark just, just so you can see a comparative of having a 4070 GPU versus the built-in AMD <laughs> processor. But while that's going, uh, on the mini PC, because this one has a 2.5 gig connection on it, so I'm just going to run my speed test off of it just to see what we get here. Yeah, so we're getting the full... For the most part. I mean, there's, there's going to be some variation, but it's, it's right on the money. 2.1. I'm not going to split hairs on that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so that 2.5 gig seems to be working as advertised. So that's good. All right, so let's go back to here. And it should if it's an Intel chipset. And I'm just going to put some notes in here. Intel 2.5 gig. B-roll. Okay. All right. So we're going to. I'm going to run the um, just the regular benchmark on here, just so you can see it like running. Now, remember, before we were seeing like 30 to 45 frames per second, depending on where in the test we were in. I have a feeling this one's going to be cooking at a much higher rate. And Rosemary's really into the form factor on this one. Yeah, me too. So I'm going to play around with this one over the weekend. I may, I may get some time this week. We'll see what tomorrow's looking like. But I want to spend a little bit of time just to make sure I get everything tested that I'd like to test on it. So hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Not a fan of the unicorn vomit either. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's classy looking, exactly. Because I, I think there's, you know, what's happened is, is that, you know, developers want more power. Like, especially if you're doing AI and you've got your transformers running or whatever the heck they call them, you can, you can run it on here, right? You've got a 4070. Do it all. Um, it's not big. It's not, it's not obnoxious. It looks like... It's almost like one of those, um, 
you know, like like one of those basic little cars that that just kicks butt, right? Like you get you get in the car, it's like oh, it looks like a regular car, and then you step on the gas, and you're like, holy crap, this car is moving. All right, so case in point, before we were about 40 frames per second right here. This one is 230. <laughs> And the fan is not loud. It is not loud. That looks so good. Yeah, 240 right here. So this test is going to be like off the chart, but that's because it's the basic one. But it is not loud. And Meatface, yes, it does have my Asus, so I bet you that it, um, I should go in there and check, check those settings too. Yes, yeah, so that, that, was, that was like nothing for this thing. So before we got a score of like 7,600 or whatever. <laughs> now you've got 36,697. So it, it's like orders of magnitude, orders of magnitude. And I bet you if you were to look at the guts inside of this, from a surface area standpoint, they're not much different than the surface area of the motherboard in this thing. <laughs> but it's just, it's all a matter of uh, technology, right? That's how it, how it rolls. So that's crazy. All right, so let's see. What does this have for a, a resolution? So the display resolution is 2880 by 1800. So what I'm going to do here real quick, oops, I didn't want to load that again. Um, I will load up the two games we just, we just ran on the mini PC. Actually, I'm just going to do No Man's Sky. I got to get the controller connected. Let's see. Now, the other thing with this is that it, I think it has Thunderbolt. So you can do a lot. There's a lot you can do with this thing. I'm just going to move the Xbox controller over to this one here. And Rosemary says they call the cooling system Icy Sum. So cool. Well, at least I know there's at least one viewer for this, uh, for this video. So I will definitely uh, get to this one soon. Yeah, it, it's, I like this a lot. I just like the form factor. I mean, the performance we just saw is pretty darn good too, but the form factor for me is a winner. I may actually um, have this be, we're, we're doing our high school graduation live stream next week with vMix. I may, I may have this be our backup. This one is on loan. I got to, I got to return it. Um, but this, I could see myself buying this at some point. Because it looks pretty solid. All right, let me just go and get... Um, Is connected here. Oh, I didn't get connected drive yet. Okay. All right, so now let's play No Man's Sky on this one. And what I'll do on this is kind of run it at its native resolution. So the list price on this one looks to be about 2,400 bucks. And uh, I hope you got time, Red Techie. <laughs> There's a lot to it. it you're you're going to like it, though, because there's resource management. It's got the trading stuff. You got missions. That, you, you, you build up your own fleet. Like, I've got my own, I have my own um, uh, battle cruiser or freighter. I can park all my ships in it. Like, it, it, it's the game you always wanted as a kid. Let's just put it that way. And I'll, I'll send you my details and you can connect with me.
And here's the cool thing with No Man's Sky. Because it's on Steam, on the Mac, your save game will sync with your PC. What do I think of the trackpad? It's okay. I, you know, I tend to prefer now the virtual ones, like my MacBook one. And I'm starting to see some other brands do that also. It's kind of your traditional one. I have not figured out how to use the little dial thing that's on it. So it's got this dial there. Did I mention it's an OLED display? And the, let me see if I can find the, the refresh or the, all right, so the display, yeah, they call this Asus Ice Cool is what they're calling this one. That's what they call the, the, the cooling system. It's, it's actually very quiet. Um, the OLED display is running at 120 hertz. It's like checking all the boxes for me here. I, I kind of like this one. All right, so let's go over to, you yeah, now the fan's starting to, to heat up, you know, heat up a little bit here, but it's not, it's not, it's not loud. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn this up to the native resolution of the display, which is 2880 by 1800, if it supports that. Let's see. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to do the native resolution here. I'm going to max out the FPS because I don't want to limit it. I'm not sure if it supports G-Sync or not, but I'm just going to go to like 160 for the heck of it. And then on the setting side, I'm going to put everything on ultra because I have a feeling we're going to be able to handle this, but we'll see. All right, let's see what happens here. All right, we got to restart the game. Of course we do. All right, so we got to restart the game, and then when we come back up, we should be able to have a good idea as to what it's capable of here. All right, so we're going to run it at the native resolution. Hang on. All right, that's the, uh, the warning bell. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to have time for this game, and then i got a jet. But I'll do more in the review. And I'm thinking here, like, gosh, I love the size. 14-inch, it's a 14-inch laptop, so you can see my hand against it here. If you want to see it against me, I'll pick it up here and just show you in this view. So it's, it's not big. It's not heavy. And now we're going to push the, uh, the GPU a bit here, so let's see how it, how it handles that. I think it's got Thunderbolt. Let me check the specs here. It's got one Thunderbolt on, oh, it's only one Thunderbolt port. So you've got, that's one knock against it. Thunderbolt on this side, on the left side. And then the other side are USB 3.2. And there is, it says there's a full-size port also. I mean, it's on the other side. Okay, so the Thunderbolt's over here. And then on this side, you've got, yeah, so here you've got your, oh, there isn't a, another USB-C. So you have a USB-A here. Where did I see two other ones? You on the back? I mean, it's just the one. Okay, so it's got a Thunderbolt port on this. So the ports are a bit limited. So it's got a Thunderbolt port on this side. Am I crazy? It says USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port. Oh, no. Okay, I got my... <laughs> what an idiot. I have my, my drive plugged into one of them. So you got two USB-Cs here. One is Thunderbolt, one is USB. And it's 3.2, not 4. But the Thunderbolt is 4. And then on the other side, you've got your USB-A uh, port. Well, this looks nice. All right, so let's get our... Oh, I should pull up our NVIDIA thing, but. I should put my NVIDIA specs in here to get the frames per second, but I think I might be able to pin this on screen here. There we go. Okay. 
Let me move this real quick. I got the Microsoft Game Bar version, but I think that'll probably be okay, right? I'll throw this over here and pin it. All right, so we're running at the native resolution at like the highest settings. A little bit of lag. That might be from my drive loading up here. Yeah, it's just grabbing textures. That's going to kill it a little bit. So this is ultra on at native resolution. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? And we're getting about 45 to 50. And that's on the planet here. This game is tough because the frame rate varies a lot. But it looks nice, doesn't it? It looks nice and sharp, too. It really looks good. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing about 40 to 50 is what I would put this at. But that's ultra. This is cranked up to the max native resolution. So very playable. It looks good. Yeah, the colors look right to me. It's just the, uh, you know, I'm shooting it with my camera here, so that's part of the, the problem. Well, look, there's a lot of sodium over here. These are sodium, sodium plants. Let's load up on some sodium. So you have to collect your resources. So when you find one of these Sodium rich environments. Sodium is a big one. You got to have, I think, for your shields and stuff. So these are important to have here. So we'll grab a few of those. Yes, yeah, so I've, I've just loaded up on my sodium supply here pretty good. Okay, so then, now this planet has a day night cycle. So the, my other one where I live doesn't have that same issue. But yeah, this is running great. So yeah, this is again ultra settings, native resolution. You could certainly get 60 if not far more um, if you turn up the settings a bit here. I'm going to summon my, my ship here. And Red Tech, if you need help um, with the game, I'm happy to oblige. Here we can have my ship come and land here for me. So here we go. Watch the, the ship's going to come in. That's my ship. That's one of my ships. I have a whole fleet of ships. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And every ship, every planet, everything is unique because it's all procedurally generated. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, you're hooked. You're, you're gonna, it's going to consume you for the next three months. And then you'll, you'll come down off of it. <laughs> all right, cool. So let me just add this to my notes here. Yeah, so that's cranked. So good stuff. All right. Well, uh, Ashley, thank you for the follow on Amazon along with Fimosa57. So yeah, so I think we've got a good starting point here. Um, maybe I'll do, let me do Red Dead real quick. My kids haven't found me down here yet. So I think I can get away with one more because I do want to at least capture, get some work done here. <laughs> work meaning getting some, some games captured for the... Uh, for the gaming portion of the video here. But it's, it's fun to see, you know, kind of the, the difference between, you know, a little onboard GPU versus, you know, hardcore hardware here. And yeah, this is the 4070. I don't know what driver set they have on it. I think they're, they're building this one towards the studio line. So maybe the, the drivers we might be able to squeeze a little more performance out of it if we do the game drivers on it. I'll, I'll double check. But definitely the 4070. It was, as I looked at earlier, it is running in an 85 watt configuration. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, you can buy 
There are laptops with more power going to the GPU than 85 watts, but this one's at 85 watts. So for creative work, it's going to be fine. It's going to be more than fine. Yeah, I, got, I, can, I, can get, I can get away with one more here, and then i got to run. Because the kids are alone upstairs. So it's only a matter of time before one of them comes back down looking for me. They're good at finding, they're good at finding me. And they're going to be hungry in a few minutes. All right, so we're loading up here. All right, so now this game we're going to run. Um, this one is, you know, this one is not as as kind. <laughs> like No Man's Sky on this hardware, you can you can run it at ultra and be good. Um, so let's go into our settings here and see what we can do on the graphics. All right, so right now it is set at 2880 by 1800. All right, so it's, you know what? It's kind of in the middle of the road for graphics, so we're kind of at a midpoint. So it automatically set these. So why don't we just see what happens? Yeah, it's kind of like medium. Midpoint, medium, you know. But I have to say, the fan is not loud. I, again, i got to run my, my stress test on it. But I am really digging the form factor. I like the size. All right, so here at medium settings, you know, I'll hit my recorder here. I thought I was in a different spot before, and I got a horse here. I'm going to see if I can run, you know, work my way into, into town over yonder. It looks pretty good, though. So we're getting about kind of what we had on the other game, which is about 40-ish here. The GPU is at 100%, so it's running at full blast. But I'll tell you what, the, and you can't really see this on the stream, but the visual quality is night and day <laughs> compared to what it was before. Um, but we're, we're at about 40 here. So you know, what you would need to get to 60 on this would be, you know, to, to tamp down on the, uh, the resolution and, and the graphics quality. So you know, a little bit of lag there, too. Although I, I suspect some of that lag is, is loading in textures. So I'm going to put this one around 40 to 45. But it looks spectacular. And again, this is native resolution, so you run it at 1080p, I think you can easily hit 60. But what's amazing is that the fan is not, I mean, again, the GPU is 99% right now. The fan is not going crazy. Let's go over to a structure here where you've got some more rendering to do. Let's see how that handles that. Yeah, it's keeping it's pretty consistent here. Textures look great. Screen looks looks spectacular. Think about the design that goes into this because this is not like some they have to make all of this. The textures, the maps, the terrain, the buildings, the what the buildings look like, the animals, everything is just crazy. Details amazing on this. Yeah, so this is about 40 to 45. Again, native resolution, 2880 by 1800, and medium settings. So 
So I'd say 40 to 45. But again, the uh, form factor, I'm not trying to sell this here, I just, 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 but hear me out, like, look how, nice, look how small that is. Isn't that amazing? It looks great, look at this. And it's not very hot, the fan's not going too crazy here. So we'll have to see how the, um, you know, how it does with, uh, in all my stress tests and all the other, oops, all the other stuff that I run, but I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. If I was in the market for something like this, I would, I would consider this one very seriously because it has the horsepower. So for example, like my, my stream that I'm doing right now, it could handle all of that. So for an on-the-road production machine, perfect for that. Because you, you got the good GPU. The NVIDIA GPUs have some great video encoders built in, so it's, it's great for that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, first impression on this is great. I don't know if it's going to have um, the performance of a gaming laptop that's larger with noisier fans, but like I said, I got to do a little bit more research on it to see what the target is for it. I think they're targeting this one at creatives. And let me get the weight on it because I did not look up the weight before. I hear my children moving around upstairs. So I'm going to get I'm going to get caught in a minute. All right, the weight, 1.6 kilograms. So that is three and a half pounds. That's, that, <laughs> that's light. So three and a half pounds, 1.6 kilograms. That is very lightweight. I would imagine the battery won't last very long, especially when that, that GPU is going. But... Yeah, so I, you know, this is something that for me, like I've been looking for something in this form factor. It definitely fits that bill. All right, I got to run, but thank you all for tuning in. This was a fun, a fun list of things to work on here. And uh, yeah. Good stuff. I don't think you could probably do two GPUs. You could you hook up two. I don't know if you could use them concurrently because one would have to be over the Thunderbolt. So, and the Thunderbolt is the lower port here. So this is cool. I like it. All right, I got to run, but thank you all for tuning in and uh, catch you on the next one, all right? So thanks everybody for being a part of the stream today. It's always helpful to, you know, get my work done with all of you. And I got a good head start on two different projects, which is always good. All right. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.